Hey everyone, out here today talking to you about the Walther PPKS and 22 long rifle. Quick safety check before we get started. What you want to do is pull the slide back. The internal slide lock holds the slide open. Then drop the magazine, empty. Verify chamber clear, yes. Pulling back on the slide, closes the gun. Okay, this is very similar, if not identical, to the PPKS in 380 Auto, except this one now is made in Germany, imported by Walther Arms in Fort Smith, Arkansas, but chambered for 22 long rifle. I'll start with the obvious uh, trigger pull. This trigger action is double action for the first shot, single action for every subsequent shot. The first double action trigger pull is 17 and a half pounds. The subsequent single action trigger pulls are 6.1 pounds. With the hammer cocked, you can use the frame mounted safety, put the gun on safe, and it functions as a decocker, making the gun on safe, hammer down. The gun comes in two models, a silver and a black version. Uh, it's got adjustable front and rear sights. The front sight is replaceable. So when you pick your particular ammunition you'd like to use, if it shoots too high or shoots too low, you have a taller and shorter front sight post. The rear sight is drift adjustable. The sights are very small, but they're quite usable, and you'll see that later when we get to the range portion of the video. Grips, nice checkered plastic, kind of hollow sounding, but definitely serviceable. Takedown is a little bit different with this gun than what you might expect. So what we'll do is we'll turn it off safe, cock the hammer. What you'll want to do is pull down on the articulated trigger guard. And what that allows you to do is pull the slide back, lift the slide off the frame and slide it forward. When you're done with that, you've got your slide recoil spring that just went flying, and frame which has the barrel mounted to the receiver. That's something a little bit different than many folks may not be familiar with. The barrel is threaded. If you can see right here close, there's a collar or thread protector on the end of the barrel, and Walther gives you a wrench where that can be removed, and you could attach uh, a muzzle device of your preference, whether that be a noise abatement device or compensator or some other type of device. Time out while I find my recoil spring and I'll show you how it goes back together. Well, that wasn't too painful. We retrieved the recoil spring, which is actually very light. It's large, but it's a very light spring. To reassemble your PPKS, you want to put that spring over the barrel. Okay, so what I do is kind of hold that trigger guard down with my thumb, take the slide, insert it on the frame. You have to give it a little bit of jiggling to get the barrel poking through and then pull it all the way back, push it down and then the slide moves forward. Then you can release the trigger guard and the gun's back and serviceable. Pushing down on the safety lowers the hammer. Magazines, stainless steel, 10 round, very robust. Unfortunately, they don't have a, an assist on either side, so you will load them uh, one round at a time, just like you do with a larger caliber magazine. Uh, it's interesting, they're very short. You would expect the magazine holding 10 rounds to be a little bit longer than this. And what happens is as you insert the, mag as you insert the rounds into the magazine, they stagger just a tiny bit, and that actually gives you uh, the room to get 10 rounds in this magazine while not making it a true double stack or fat magazine. The Walther PPKS 22 long rifle is available in two versions, a silver and a black. The black has an approximate retail price of $350. The silver is probably going to run about $20 to $30 more. So with that, let's get the Walther PPKS 22 long rifle out on the range and we'll see how it does. Shooting from a fixed rest, I tried several different ammunition brands and types for accuracy and velocity. 
The setup here is the chronograph is at 10 feet, the target is at 10 yards. I'm only including one of the tests in the video, just so you can see the approximate pacing of the shots. Definitely slow fire, every single shot very well aimed, trying to wring as much accuracy out of the pistol as possible. Looking at the on-target results, this was very typical for all the ammunition types. When shooting from the bench, the pistol had a tendency to shoot high and to the left. Looking at the individual loads, overall accuracy was great. I mean, definitely preferred the target grade ammunition over the bulk pack, but all groups falling between three quarters and two and a quarter inches. Much better accuracy than I expected. Shooting offhand at 10 yards, still had a tendency to push my shots to the left, but they were much closer to point of aim. They weren't going above the point of aim as they were from the bench. Very easy gun to shoot quickly with accuracy. What we're looking at here is the last string of fire but this time with the high speed camera. The high speed camera captures 120 frames a second. Things you want to look for, recoil. You can definitely see that shock wave going up my arm, but you don't see a lot of muzzle rise. And that's what's great about this pistol. Very easy to get back on target. You're not trying to compensate a lot of muzzle rise. Ejection, very brisk. Here's a, there we go. That was one that didn't really have the same powder charge as the rest but it definitely ejected cleanly. No problems at all with feeding and extraction. I recently purchased some steel targets to use for these reviews. And using that same high speed camera, but this time at 1200 frames a second, I wanna see what the bullets did when they hit the steel plates. So starting from the top left, middle, bottom, I'll show you again here in a second as we rewind and go through the same shots again. You can see the bullet actually flattens out and fragments. Sometimes it drops straight down and other times it kind of ricochets off to the right. That's why you really want to stay back at least 10 yards when you shoot these steel targets, even with a 22. Punching holes in paper gets boring pretty quickly. I put a steel plate, this one's 10 inches, out at 10 yards. I wanted to see how quickly and accurately I could put shots on target with the BPKS. That didn't put a smile on your face, nothing will. Obviously I enjoyed shooting the PPKS at that steel target. Now for this next part, just indulge me. I wanted to see if it was possible to ring out long range accuracy from the pistol. All right. 10. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty five ish. This has got to be 35.
Yep. There we go. 35. Forty. Yeah. And I'll try fifty again. Nope. Come on, you got this. Yes! I heard it. That was 50. Can I do it twice? I got one, one or two bullets left. I think I missed. Awesome. All right. 50 yard capable. 100% fun. The Walther PPK S22 long rifle. Wrapping up the review, I really like the Walther PPK S22 long rifle, but you probably know that after watching the video. It's just really fun to shoot. I hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments below. I'll also be publishing a written review on the Rimfire Channel blog. Thanks for watching. The Rimfire Channel is made possible by our generous sponsors, Ammunition Depot and Tandem Cross.